Hey, what's up, everybody? Cody Wilcoxon here, and after three long years of absence, I bring you another Maya scripting video. So, first off, uh, to explain where I've been the past couple years, um, I actually moved to Seattle, work for the Animation Capstone at the University of Washington, where we work on several films each year, and that's where this guy here is from. This is a character named Roy. He's from a production called Fish Out of Water. Uh, it's gone to several festivals. I will probably leave the link to the video in the comment section below. Uh, but he is actually not the main point of this video. What I want to show you today is a tool that I've been working on for the past nine months or so. It's been a labor of love for sure. Uh, so let me introduce to you without further ado, drum roll please, the meta character picker. Uh, doesn't look like there's anything there. Well, that's because we haven't set this up yet. So what I have created here is an interesting tool. This is a completely modular, because you know how I love modularity, um, this is a modular character picker tool. So that means I can take any character, as long as it's set up using the Mars system, uh, I can take it, I can create a UI for it from scratch, and I can design it any way I want. And let me show you how that works. So right now it's created a document that currently has nothing in it, and that's fine. But down here we have this little edit UI. Now before I go there, I want to show you a little bit of what's going on on this side. So you have a few buttons, default pose, select all anims, yada, yada, yada. Um, but if I select things, what you'll notice is we have a fake channel box here. And this channel box actually works the exact same way the normal channel box does. I can click on the wording here, middle mouse drag, and it works the same way. And I can even use the real channel box, and it updates on the fly. Pretty cool stuff. So that's the first thing. Um, there are also, if you right click on these, there are also a few other attributes that we can take a look at. Key selected, key all attributes. So if you select an object, keys everything for that selected object. Delete keys, that's for specific attributes. Delete all attribute keys, and of course, return a default. So there's a lot of cool things that we've added to this, but now let's get to the brunt of this. What you have here is something where I can hit edit, U edit GUI, and now we get to have some fun. So I'm going to turn off all of the controls here, and I'm going to go to my front camera and scroll in. And I'm going to hit this button that says take picture. Now, it doesn't look exactly flattering yet, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep lining this up, and eventually I'm going to get something that I like. I'm going to turn the controls on just a minute here, and I'm going to bring his arms down. So what I'm doing is I'm setting up the basis for the UI here. I really like how that looks. I might lift the camera up a little bit more. It's my front camera, so... I'll go to 92-ish. Zoom out just a smidgen. Perfect. Now I'll hit Save Image. Boop. And there we go. We've already started with our first section of our UI. But that's not the only section we need. Because we have a facial rig as well. But the anims would be so small on this. So I'll just make another section. First, I'm going to add a hand section. So I'll add UI. I'm going to make a face section. And because I've played around with this rig before with the character picker, I'm going to add a tie section as well. He's got a lot of tie anims. Uh, great. I'm also going to rename this as body. Now, I usually like to reset it just in case after I rename a UI, but uh, that should do just fine. Now, uh, first, I'm going to go to the tie section. I'm going to take a picture, zoom in just to where I have enough to work with. That should be fine. So there's our tie section. Uh, our face section, I'm going to go up. Let's take a look here. 
that's not bad. Um, I think we can zoom in a little more to get a little more space. Stare into his beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> um, let's go up a little bit more. That should be perfect. Save that. And then hands. Hands are going to do something a little different. So I'm going to return to default pose here, which, by the way, we'll talk about some of the cool rigging systems that have been developed uh, since my last video uh, at a later date. But what I'll do is I'll go to my top view, and I'll do something like this. I will rotate this inward, rotate these out-ish. And we're just going to position these just right. So I'll move this here, I'll move these here, and I'll bring the thumbs in just a little bit. That should be perfect. Uh, OK, so let me zero this out so I can get a little closer in. Uh, let's take a picture, let's get a little closer, zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna Actually, there we go. That should be fine. Rotate that in just a bit more. That way I can zoom in a smidgen more and save. Perfect. All right, so we got our UI set up, and now we get to the bulk of this setup. So I'm going to go back to body here, and I'm going to hit this button that says Edit Buttons. Go back to perspective mode here and return this to default pose. Now we can have some fun. So what this does, it's one thing to make pictures and make like little panels for you to access. That's that's one thing, but to be able to make buttons and move them around, that's another thing. So first I'm gonna make a cog button. Okay. And what this does, this little display here is very cool because I can actually change these values here and it will show what the button is going to look like beforehand. And then if I hit add button, there's our button right there. I can move it around our scene. I don't really like the size of that, so I'm going to reduce it a little bit more. And there we go. Next, let's take a look at this anim here. This is our spine one. So what I like to do is I like to add my center ones first. There's a whole host of uh, different techniques and stuff for um, creating this setup that I like to use. Uh, and what I'm doing here is I'm setting up the FKs. Um, there's our pelvis anim. I'm going to do that. This is an RFK, so let's reverse FK. Make that a little smaller and put that just below the belt here. There we go. And yeah, I think we're almost to the point where I can start doing left side and right side. So uh, so that's just an anim section. Uh, I can, or controls, if you will. I can also change the side, so left, right, or none. Uh, I'm going to work on the left side because I prefer the left. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an FK clavicle. So I'll s just bring that in a little bit. I want to make something that is a little thin, like that. So I'll add that. OK, great. Um, I'm going to make one of these. Now this part's going to be interesting, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a system that will be able to switch and turn off the buttons with IK and FK mode, which is going to be really neat. So. There's my buttons for FK mode. And now I'm going to take this here. I'll switch this to IK mode. I'll make uh, the control a little bit bigger. Okay, perfect. 
move that one here. Now, uh, I'm going to do something with that in a second. Uh, let's take this one, make PV for pole vector. Boop. And perfect. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to align this right where that anim is. So I'm going to select this one, hold shift, and select FK, and do align X, align Y, and now it's perfectly aligned with it. Sweet. Um, next, I want to make one where I can grab the switch. So I will do that really quick. We'll call this FK IK. And we'll make it a little wider, a little thinner. Boom. There we go. Uh, now we go to some different types of buttons. So if I go to switch, this is fun. I'll click this. I'll click this button here to add the anim. And it adds all of the IK and FK buttons that are going to be swapping every time I click this particular button. I'm going to call this button switch because that's exactly what it's going to be doing. Make it a little wider just so I can tell the difference. Move this up here and move this over. There we are. And now, without further ado, I will select all of these buttons that I have made and hit mirror selected. Boom. And if I turn edit GUI off, uh, what you'll notice is, hey, look at that. Um, the FK ones disappeared on that one. The IK ones disappeared on this one. But if I hit switch, how cool is that? Uh, now, in addition to that, when you're not in um, edit mode, this is how it functions. You can click and marquee select like you can in Maya. You can click outside of a button as if you were clicking off in the viewport, and that deselects everything. You can toggle select by holding shift. You can use control shift select and add to selections. And basically, I try to make this as versatile as possible and uh, as user friendly to Maya's setup as possible. So um, there you have it. Now, we're, we seem to be forgetting one thing. What if we have a setup where we want to be able to switch between uh, the body, the hands, the face, and the tie like this? Well, this frame little scroll box is one thing, but I want a button that does that. So I'm going to do is I'm going to go to UI. And this is a fun button because I made it to where this is semi-transparent. So if I want to put it over the face like so, I can. And I can make this go to the face UI. So I'll do that. Put it right over top. Boom. And I also want to do one for the hands. So let's make this go to the hands. And I'll mirror these buttons here. And then I want one for the tie. Now, I don't want to put it over those buttons because that's going to conflict. So I will make this a little higher. And I'll put it on the sides here. So tie, add button, add button. And we'll mirror the selection. Boom. See how quick and versatile uh, this setup is? So now if I click this. Boom, takes me to the tie section. I'll go back. If I click this one, it takes me to the face section. And boom, it takes me to the hand section. So you have a whole host of options here. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I think that covers pretty much anything. So really quick, I will pause the video here. And I'll show you what a complete UI setup will look like. And there you go. Here's our complete user setup. So as you can see, I can switch between FK and IK mode uh, by using our channel box. I can select multiple pieces here. I can key them just like the normal channel box. I can delete keys on just that attribute, or I could delete all the attribute keys. I could move this around uh, if I wanted just one of these attributes to return to its default attribute, then I could, whoops, 
whoops, whoops, whoops, whoops. I could right click on just that one and return to default. Or I could hit default pose and it'll return all of them. I could select all the anims on this character. And as you can see as well, if I select on, uh, if I select this on a, um, oops, there we go. I don't know why that tool is disabled for a second. But if I select these just by selecting them in the viewport as opposed to the tool, it still lights up. And again, if I update things in the real channel box here like so, it will update this on the fly. So that is about it, everyone. Uh, if you uh, have any comments or questions about this particular tool, feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Uh, and hopefully you'll be seeing a lot more of me. I apologize for the three-year gap, but uh, I think uh, you'll be expecting some cool things pretty soon. So that's it. I'm Cody Wilcoxon, signing off.